So the season from heaven continues. The Lions are in the conference championship game for the first time since a year we referenced a lot last week, 1991. As you can see, if you have seats on the glass, you're not necessarily on the glass, but your view of the ice isn't obstructed at all. But this team has really earned it. Only one loss to this point, and that came against Nagani, who will be playing on this floor tomorrow. Six point lead there with a minute left. I thought they left enough time for the Buckeyes to go down there and win it. And in just a few hours, we'll know if those fans will have an opportunity to go cheer on their Lions at Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. Head coach of the Wildcats men's team, Matt Mackerzak, and Matt, the Green Blazer is yeah, out. Yeah. Why was tonight the night? And for guys like offensive lineman Taylor Decker, who have been with the team since the dark days of the franchise, yesterday's divisional round win was almost indescribable. Things are different. Aaron Rodgers is gone. Jordan Love is in. And both teams are looking great. If you're just joining us, Alaska leads Michigan Tech. One zip after one period here in Grand Rapids. So you see the football field behind me. That's where Jared Goff played his high school ball from 2011 to 2013. But more importantly, not a lot of teams get to say this, Keegan. They won their final game of the year. When Detroit led 24 to 7, no one expected this red and gold confetti to be falling on the field after the game. But that's exactly what happened. All right, everyone say a prayer for John Please. Scott's chickens. And from Grand Rapids, Michigan, this is the 50. Seventh Great Lakes Invitational. And the Marquette Sentinels boys basketball team hasn't lost since before they were even called the Sentinels. That was back on December 18th. Summer's last hurrah here in the UP tonight, and it was a great evening of high school football. Yeah. We were treated to an instant classic between the two winningest programs in college football history today. Keegan, playoffs. That's got a nice ring to it. Right now, I'll throw it to the man on the call this evening, Dave Ellis at the Barry Event Center. We would be remiss if we didn't talk about all the women and girls that came before this team and laid the groundwork for what Ishpeming girls basketball has become. It's the final weekend of the CCHA hockey season, but we can't start there. It's all about the rematch tonight. A total of three overtimes between NMU men's and women's basketball against Grand Valley State. Let's start with the men's game. That would be the U.S. Open hard court in 2022. Wimbledon on the grass last year and now the clay at Roland Garros. And tonight, below the bridge, NMU women's basketball played its first tourney game in five years. It was physical. It was action-packed. Just everything you hope for. Let's check out the tale of the tape. Michigan Tech hockey coach Joe Sean made a splash in the transfer portal yesterday when former Michigan State defenseman Victor Hertig announced his commitment to the Huskies. Grace, that Rose Bowl, I'm still not over it. Hail to the victors. And Ishpeming's state championship run was also a full circle moment for this year's seniors. Why? Because they dreamt of it nearly 10 years ago when they started playing youth basketball together. Oh my God. <laughs> Looking back at Lily's face. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Oh, summer ball tournaments. Oh, yeah. But these pictures are worth much more to Ishpeming seniors and their families. Huh? In, in your driveway. In our driveway, yep. Oh, that was, that was one of the first years yeah, as, one of the blizzard. First years as the blizzards. We were little nine-year-olds, like, dreaming of this. <laughs> so just to be able to, like, have our year on the banner is really special. Eddie Morton's not kidding. These young girls in their early years of playing organized basketball manifested this moment, making it all the more sweet when the day finally arrived. Thinking about it for so long, that was like our main goal, obviously, for all these years. So actually accomplishing it, it was crazy. Coaching the girls back in the day was Addie's dad, Dave, and Jenna Mackey's dad, Greg. Reluctant at first, it quickly became one of the best decisions of their lives. He gave me a call and said, uh, one of the dads that were coaching them the year before is moving away. What do you think? I said, I, I don't know. I don't not really want to ever coach my kids. We kind of kind of took off from there. We met in the gym and just started going through basics, layups and drills and run, 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 run. <laughs> we we yeah, made sure they were in shape. <laughs> yeah. Did they really talk about playing here for Ishpeming and, and you know winning state titles? Did, were, were their dreams that big? I would say. I would say by fifth grade. Yeah. Well, the thing, too, when Coach Rico would get us time here in, in the new gym, I would often, Greg and I would have him on the baseline, and I would point up to the banners. This is where we want to be. This right now, what we're doing, the off-season stuff, you know, the travel basketball, this is what this is our goal. This is our end goal is to get here. We stay together as a group. 
you guys do this off the court, on the court, you keep it all together and, and we will get here one day. For the dads and girls alike, reaching the mountaintop on March 23rd was a culmination beyond words. I think we just turned and hugged each other immediately. Yeah. <laughs> you know, both of us in tears, you know. Yeah. All those yeah. years, you know. And it, it was it, amazing. It just, it just came to a moment and it was just, <laughs> like I said, the tears just flowed. And it, The great thing about this group too is they've never forgotten about us. You know what I mean? They've, in the district championship, they hauled us out onto the court. They wanted a picture with the two of us with the district trophy and those senior girls we got in a huddle. And I said, I get choked up now. <laughs> I said, this is it. This is what we've talked about. This is what we're working on. We, all these years, this is what we've worked for. Now we got to keep it going and let's get it done. Let's finish the job. And they did it. While their dads continued to motivate from the stands, it still required an endless drive on the part of the hematite senior leaders to get the job done in East Lansing. All of us being dedicated, you know, even the girls who don't love the sport as much as others, they still put in just as much work and showed up, you know, through the summer on the days when no one wanted to be in the gym. Those girls were there during the season, you know, paying attention, just giving, giving it their all. What are some of your favorite memories from playing in your pre-high school days when, when your dads were coaching? Um, definitely not our dads, I think we can both <laughs> <Yeah>. agree. <laughs> it, was, it was tough being coach's daughter. <laughs> you got picked on the most and probably ran the most throughout practice. And the most aggressive talks after the game, for yeah. sure. But Our rides home were not fun. No. <laughs> when it's all said and done, the bond between dad and daughter and coach and player are one and the same, and the memories will never fade. Unbelievably proud, every one of them. Every one of them seniors has a spot in my heart for the rest of my life. In Detroit, Jared Goff has become a hero, much to the delight of the people who've known him since he was a kid. I don't think we've ever heard a stadium yell a name so loud. And I think that, uh, you know, we felt that. I mean, it says everything about him. You know, he, he's a he's an incredible competitor. Um, you know, and he just you know continues to rise. Mazi Moyed's first season as head coach at Marin Catholic High School north of San Francisco was the same year Goff became the Wildcats varsity quarterback. Goff threw for over 7,900 yards and compiled a 39 and four record during his high school career. And his old coach isn't surprised one bit by his resurrection in Detroit. If there's one thing I've learned from watching him and his career is just sort of, you know, it, it pays to be who you are and, 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 and just stay being that guy. And, and he's never changed throughout, you know, uh, in terms of his character and, and sort of his values and everything. On Sunday, the kid from the Bay returns home to face the team he grew up rooting for on one of the biggest stages in pro sports. Goff knows there will be a little extra juice at Levi Stadium, but his eyes are still dead set on the Lombardi Trophy. This week will be a little bit more attention than last week, and of course, you know, there's four teams left, and, um, you know, this is, this is the times you dream of as a kid, and you grow up, you know, hoping to be in these final games, and um, we're one win away from, you know, our ultimate goal of getting to the Super Bowl and, and winning that game as well. Goff's ultimate goal could crush the dreams of the fans in his hometown. But some would still be happy to see Goff take the Lions where they've never been before. Yeah, we're all Niners fans, diehard. You know, even he was as a kid. So him coming back, I think a lot of people are torn. You know, like Niners, Jared, Niners, Jared, and uh, I think deep down, we all know that we're getting room for Jared. Um, and my brother might punch me in the face for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the seniors on Norway's baseball team have gone four for four with district titles during their time with the Knights. The next Infinity Stone for the Bleach Bandits, a regional championship on Saturday. You come through it, come through it. Come on, come on. Norway's 2024 senior class is in rarefied air, leading the Knights to conference championships in football, basketball, and baseball, all in the same year for the first time in school history. It makes me pretty proud just in the fact that whenever we were growing up, we didn't have a lot of like trust in our class to like do big things, I guess, and we all put the time in and it paid off and it's just a great accomplishment to feel. Ian Pop is one senior who had a hand in all three of those accomplishments, 
The other, Alex Ortman, who will be moving on to play both basketball and baseball at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. this fall. Yes, sir. I thought it would be impossible to do both, but I mean, it's it's a dream come true for sure. It, it's pretty cool for him playing both sports. It's going to be it's a tough thing, and I think he'll be able to do it there because, I mean, he puts the work in all the time, and he's definitely made for that. Gallaudet is a private university for the deaf and hard of hearing. Ortman, like his older brother Connor, who went on to play four years of basketball at Lakeland University, was born legally deaf. He can hear perfectly fine thanks to a cochlear implant, but he says having teammates that have gone through similar experiences to him makes it a perfect fit. A lot of the teammates I've known have had the same problem, so I mean, the college was really just perfect for me, a good, good situation, so I mean, that's why I picked it. I look forward to seeing how he does. I've been watching him, he's a neighbor, I've been watching him since he's you know been super young, so we're all rooting for him. The Knights still have unfinished business on the baseball field. After winning their fifth straight district title last week, they overcame Jeffers Wednesday night to advance to the regional finals Saturday in Harbor Springs. With many of them sporting bleach blonde hair for the postseason, the Bleach Bandits don't want this ride to end. We've been playing baseball since, gosh, we were six years old, so it's our final shot. I'd say we're pretty locked in and we want it pretty bad.